In January, I will increase the price of the Thinking in English Patreon subscription service. The price will increase by 25% for the English listener tier and English learner tiers. Currently, these are £4 and £8 a month, about $5 or $10 a month. But if you join right now in December, you will be able to join for the current price and you will never have to pay more. Why should you join now? Join to benefit from our conversation clubs where you can practice speaking with fascinating people about great topics. Join to listen to extra Thinking in English episodes. Join to access extra vocabulary and study activities with the transcripts. And if you join Patreon right now, you can save 15% if you pay annually. Click the link in the description now or go to patreon.com forward slash thinking in English. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Happy Christmas to all of the Thinking in English listeners out there. In this Christmas special episode, I am going to introduce you to a traditional British Christmas. More specifically, my traditional British Christmas. I hope you all enjoy listening. You can find the full transcript for free over on the Thinking in English blog. And here is today's vocabulary list. Festive. Festive. Related to a celebration or festival. For example, the town square was adorned with festive lights and decorations. Carols. Carols. Festive songs often associated with Christmas, as in carol singers spent the evening singing at the local pub. Stockings. Stockings. Long socks traditionally hung by the fireplace for small gifts, as in the children eagerly hung their stockings by the fireplace, hoping to find surprises from Santa on Christmas morning. Boxing Day. Boxing Day. The day after Christmas in the UK. For example, on Boxing Day, families gathered for leisurely activities and enjoyed the leftovers from Christmas dinner. Public Holiday. Public Holiday. A day on which most businesses and schools are closed. As in, as a public holiday, Nothing is open on Christmas Day. Advent. Advent. The period of four weeks before Christmas. As in, most families in the UK will have chocolate advent calendars. Merry Christmas. This episode is being released on Christmas Day, the 25th of December. If you are listening on release day, I hope you are having a wonderful Christmas wherever you are in the world. Even if you don't celebrate Christmas, there might be another holiday in your part of the world. The winter solstice, New Year, Hanukkah or something else. Well, have a wonderful time whatever you're doing. In honour of Christmas, I thought it would be nice to introduce you all to some of the traditions of a British Christmas. Countries around the world all have their own unique traditions and ways of celebrating Christmas. From eating fried chicken in Japan, to drinking eggnog in the USA, or putting presents in shoes in parts of Europe, everyone celebrates differently. And as a British person, who is spending Christmas in the UK with my family this year, I thought you might enjoy hearing about some British traditions. I will talk about some of the most popular Christmas celebrations in the UK and also mention how my family does certain things. Of course, this is just my personal perspective of Christmas in the UK. 
lots of families will have very different traditions and ways of doing things. So let's start with the run up to Christmas. As December begins, the first Christmas traditions we like to follow in the UK is the Advent calendar. An Advent calendar marks the days leading up to Christmas. Each calendar will have small numbered doors which you are supposed to open on the corresponding date. For example, open door number one on the 1st of December. Behind each door will be something. In the UK, the most popular and common type of advent calendar will have small pieces of chocolate behind the doors. As a child, it was one of the best parts of the day, eating that piece of chocolate before you had your breakfast. There are other forms of advent calendar too. When I was a child, my mum bought us one which had a different word for hello in 24 languages behind each door. And this year, I bought a tea calendar which contains a different tea bag for each day in the lead up to Christmas. More traditional than the advent calendar is lighting advent candles. But this is not something that my family does. Another part of the pre-Christmas period is carol singing. Again, this is something that I have never really participated in, but it is part of many people's Christmas experience. Carols are festive songs, usually related to Christmas, which tend to have messages of joy, happiness and goodwill. Some famous carols include Silent Night, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and deck the halls. Some people go around the town singing carols. In my hometown on Christmas Eve, many people will head to the local pubs for a drink and carol singers will also make an appearance. Another tradition is displaying Christmas decorations. Streets across England transform with lights, trees and decorations as Christmas approaches. The iconic Oxford Street in London, for example, is famous for drawing crowds to witness its annual transformation into a winter wonderland. And no British Christmas is complete without the presence of a beautifully decorated Christmas tree. Families often come together to carefully choose and adorn their trees with ornaments, baubles and lights. However, in my family, It is my mum's job to decorate the Christmas tree uh, because when we were children, my brother and I uh, were not very good at decorating Christmas trees. So my mum has decided that only she can make the Christmas tree look nice. The tradition of the Christmas tree is deeply rooted in British history, dating back to the Victorian era. It continues to symbolise the festive season's joy and unity. I mentioned previously that on Christmas Eve, the night before Christmas, I usually head to the local pubs with my old friends for a couple of beers. This is not a universal tradition, but it is something that I have done since the age of 18, apart from the Christmases I spent overseas, of course. And therefore, I tend to start my Christmas morning, or I guess midnight, uh, in the pub. However, the more traditional way to start Christmas is with a midnight mass, a church service which starts at midnight Christmas Eve. People would gather in churches to celebrate and remember the religious significance behind the holiday. Before we sleep on Christmas Eve, many British families, especially those with young children, will leave an offering for Santa Claus. Santa has to deliver millions of presents around the world, so he definitely needs some refreshments. In the USA, the stereotypical thing to leave out is milk and cookies. In Britain, we like to give Santa something a little stronger. We will usually leave a glass of alcohol, like sherry, which is a type of fortified wine, and then pair it with a traditional Christmas pie called a mince pie. I'll mention mince pies again a little later. One of the most beloved Christmas traditions in England involves leaving stockings by the fireplace or somewhere else in the house. In my house, we haven't had a fireplace for 
a long time, so we just leave stockings outside our bedroom doors. Children excitedly place their stockings, often personalised with their names, in the hopes of waking up to it being full of small gifts and treats. In the morning, children wake up to see what has been left inside the stockings. From small toys to sweets, these gifts come before the larger gift exchanged later in the day. As a child, my brother and I would take our stockings, which had been made by my grandmother, uh, to my parents' bedroom and then open them together. A little later in the morning, we will exchange the main gifts. Family come together, so my grandparents would often come to my house or we'd go to my grandparents' house and carefully exchange the presents, um, each wrapped with festive paper. I'm not very good at wrapping Christmas presents, so I often just put them in a gift bag instead. As a child, I would always hope for one of the popular toys, or a video game, or a new book from my favourite author. As an adult, I now hope for books, socks, or something to eat or drink. Most families will eat their Christmas dinner around the lunchtime, around noon, um, and I'll talk more about Christmas dinner in a second, and then we'll watch the annual speech by our country's monarch. Until her death in 2022, this was the Queen's Christmas speech, and now it's the King's speech. The annual address reflects on the events of the past year, and usually has a message of hope and unity. The event has significant cultural importance, with a lot of British people taking the time to watch or listen to the King's Christmas speech. My favourite part of Christmas is Christmas food and the Christmas dinner. For centuries, roast birds have been enjoyed uh, in England on Christmas Day. The 16th and 17th centuries, it was common to eat a goose. Some rich people would even eat things like peacock or swan. However, from the 17th century, the bird of choice became turkey, or maybe turkey and goose, or turkey and something. If you have ever read Charles Dickens' famous novel, A Christmas Carol, you will know that Ebenezer Scrooge sent Bob Cratchit a large turkey. So, our Christmas dinner will always consist of roast turkey. My family is not very large. Usually there are uh, between four and six people for Christmas dinner. So, we will only buy a very small turkey or just part of the turkey. Other popular choices for the Christmas meal include roast pork, beef, chicken, goose or duck. Accompanying the turkey are an array of side dishes. Sage and onion stuffing, crisp and golden roast potatoes, honey glazed parsnips and vegetables including Brussels sprouts are common choices. My favourite thing are pigs in blankets. In the UK, this refers to small sausages wrapped in bacon and often roasted with a sweet glaze. In addition, there are a few common sauces we have at Christmas. Gravy made from turkey, bread sauce and red currant jelly. For dessert, the most popular choices are Christmas pudding, mince pies or trifle. A Christmas pudding is an iconic dessert with dried fruits, suet and spices and often includes brandy or rum, which is set on fire. It has a dense texture and complex flavours. Mince pies have a sweet and spiced fruit filling encased in a buttery pastry, and also hold a special place in the hearts of Britons during the holiday season. And my grandfather always makes a trifle, a layered dessert of custard, sponge cake, fruits and whipped cream. But in all honesty, I prefer a non-traditional Christmas dessert like a cheesecake. One of the most unique things about Christmas dinner in the UK are Christmas crackers. A Christmas cracker is basically a tube of paper which we pull with other members of our family. When it is pulled, uh, it makes a popping sound, kind of a bang inside, and reveals the contents. Usually inside is a paper hat, a joke, and a small gift of some kind. 
after Christmas Day, on the 26th of December, we celebrate Boxing Day in the UK. The origins of the term Boxing Day are somewhat debated, but many believe it stems from the tradition of giving boxes of food, money or other necessities to servants or those in need in the past. This day is a public holiday in the United Kingdom. Boxing Day is synonymous with sports and outdoor activities in England. Football, soccer matches, horse racing, horse racing events and even traditional fox hunting, which is now illegal really, um, are integral parts of the Boxing Day experience. Boxing Day is also a day for relaxation and unwinding. Families often gather for a more casual and laid-back day, enjoying leftover Christmas treats and perhaps taking part in board games or movie marathons. Some may use the day to visit friends or family they didn't see on Christmas Day, extending the season of goodwill. Boxing Day is also one of the most significant shopping events of the year in the UK. Many retailers offer substantial discounts and in the past enthusiastic shoppers would line up early to get the best sales. In recent years, the rise of online shopping has transformed the Boxing Day sales into a digital experience. However, for me this year on Boxing Day, I will be heading to the airport to take my partner uh, who is flying back to Japan before I am. Um, so yeah, that was my my Christmas, the lead up to Christmas, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! I just want to remind you before we start this Christmas special episode of Thinking in English that Patreon prices, the Thinking in English Patreon prices, will be increasing in January. I am increasing the prices of my Patreon levels by 25%. If you join right now in December 2023, you will be able to get the cheaper price and you'll be able to continue paying that price until you decide to upgrade or quit in the future. So if you're considering joining, join right now. Go to patreon.com forward slash thinking in English or click the link in my podcast description. <laughs> 